Okay, so um, I haven't had a lot, whole lot of time to play with this. Mostly, it's been my wife that's been using it. Um, a little bug we picked up on today. I'd like to address. Um, well, it's not a bug. It's a determination on how you use your milling machine and what your kind of jewelry is. I found that I had problems when pathing. So just to recap for people that haven't seen this, uh, I'm going to put a new layer called Rotary. Whoa! And just move that onto it. Change object layer and then turn that off. Alright, so to set up your flip, okay, because I'll be getting a few questions from a few people privately on what's involved in this. I've already set a Z plane in Desproto of minus half a millimeter for the flips, that's all good. And the biggest question is what about my ground plane? What about this? What about that? The little pipe that you're looking at over here, all right, there is the border area that we're going to cut with traveling around this job. It's just a curve, the same as you would normally use a curve or a DXF curve to define your custom segment, except that if you pipe it, we can make use of a trick inside Desproto um, with the skip all ambient function that will stop the path writing when it hits the edge of the geometry. So if this is all the geometry you're exporting, this part is not going to cut any further than this line. All right. Uh, the bug, if you want to call it that, that I've picked up on is that I haven't defined my segment and sub-segment big enough to anticipate bigger rings. Now, it's easier to show you what I'm talking about than to explain it. So we're going to go into Rhino Ring. Um, we've got the orientation, I've got the flip geometry is there, but I want to work with, uh, sorry, the rotary geometry is there, the flip geometry is here, and I want to work with the flip geometry for now. So I'm going to go into Rhino Ring, and I'm going to go to Milling, and I'm going to go to Desproto, and I'm going to go to the flip. All right, select, select objects to mesh. On this point, Keith, um, your routine is very good, but does it check for open objects and refuses to go any further if any of the objects are open? Quite often, guys with milling machines will put open planes in as blockers to just block off some geometry from a first pass or um, for there's a variety of reasons we use open geometry so it's actually beneficial if you turned off that part of your mesh checking routine because this is not going to go to a grower a milling machine doesn't care if there's naked edges or if there's problems um, with the geometry and like I said quite often you will actually use open surfaces like for example I might block off this section over here cut everything with an 0.8 .8 ball mill and then come in afterwards and only cut that section with a, with a very fine cutter in there and in there and in the meantime I'll just use a piece of plane to block that off from the cutter on the first pass so if we can get that removed that would be fantastic um, alright so to carry on with what we were doing we're going to select all the objects to mesh which is all of these guys we press enter process is pretty much automated it's going to pop it into Despro for you uh, it'll pop open Desproto now with the geometry and my predetermined my predetermined settings for what I would call an average cut ready. Now if you don't know much about Desproto or you're doing this on a whim, you might have noticed that if you have anything bigger, this little green line over here, the orange line is your main segment, uh, basically telling Desproto what sort of size object to expect and the sub-segment is defining how much of that main segment we want to cut. For a lot of people this is quite confusing in the beginning, especially for jewelers, but machinists understand what all that is about. What I've done in my, in my template is I've created this huge master segment to be ready for just about anything, but I didn't create a default sub-segment big enough to handle some rings. So what would happen is when you're writing paths is the paths would end up funny. Now once again, it's easier to show you than to than to do it. So let's just write this path. Okay, now while we're writing this path, um, be aware that myself and Keith have decided not to, at the time, decided not to include the automatic path generation because there was a design feature that was missing from Desproto that was causing the chaining to be broken. I received an email today from Lex, as usual, fantastic Lex, awesome, awesome, awesome support. Lex informed me that the design feature that wasn't working before is now working and you would be able to, in future, once you trust this, be able to click one button and just have the paths show up on your desktop. 
All right, so if you were doing the pathing before and you notice this this kind of thing happening here where the path is not following the geometry and everything's looking a bit funky and it's not really working out the way it should have, the way you expect it to, and you're thinking, all right, well, obviously, no, this is not working. What's happened over here is we're trying to machine in a segment that's not right, okay? So basically, part of the geometry is sticking out past the defined subsegment. So let me show you how to fix that. And the reason I'm not going to fix it in the templates is everybody's going to have different needs. All right, and I'm going to show you how to set up sub uh, the subsegment for yourself to encompass whatever geometry you throw at it. So the way to do this is to be in the section where you're having the issue. In this case, all of this, all of the sections would have this issue, all right? Um, but I'm only going to write finishing parts here. What you need to do is actually go to your operation section, double click it, then go to your subsection, your subsegmentation, click on set graphically. When you do that, you can now quite obviously see that it's all around the outside here, but we have this problem where it's not past the end there. So just drag this out a little bit further than that line. Now have a look at your up and down too, okay? So if we look at this, we're going down half a mil underneath the center, but oh, whoopsie, what's happening over here? Up here, we haven't gone high enough to encompass that part of the segment. Once you've done this, go apply, go OK, the path will rewrite. And suddenly what you will find is, um, is that now everything's working properly. The path is traveling the way it's supposed to. It's cutting in down where it's supposed to. Everything's working normally again. So if this did catch you, all apologies have caught me too. This is a job I'm doing for someone. And when I got home from work tonight, my wife said, what is going on? And there's nothing you want more than a wife that's angry with you. All right. Happy wife, happy life. So I've found this non-bug and I've addressed it. For those of you that um, find that your geometry is bigger than what's in my templates, all you would do is just go through all your operation segments and make it big enough to encompass what you would call your average work and then save the flip DPJ into the folder with the bigger segments. From then on it would always open with them. Okay, uh, This is an unusually high piece for me to be working on, on, on milling but as you can tell that now works properly. If we go to this one you'll see that the segment is still come on, you'll see that the segment is still small. If I try to path the other half of it it'll have the same problem again. So you need to go through all of them and just adjust your segment bigger okay? Um, and that should all be working for you. So like I said, the next feature to look forward to is once we finish, once I finish testing this, which give me a day or two, on the automatic path output, um, Keith will update his buttons, or maybe he would add a dialogue asking if you want to output the path or not. Um, and then what will happen is when you then click on that, it'll just dump a couple of NC files on your desktop and all your work is done. You didn't even need to come in here and click path, 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 path. The path will all be automatically generated for you and written to an NC file in a folder of your choice. Um, that's still to come once I've had some time for more testing. Everyone, thank you very much. Cheers. Chris out.